Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day and I am here with Christine. Hi. And Christine, I want you to take a moment, maybe just introduce yourself and how long you've been connected to NCC and what that looks like for you guys now. Um, okay, so hi, I'm Christine. Um, I'm married to my wonderful husband, Justin Souther. We have two girls, Eliza, who is five, and Aria, who is two, uh, but can't wait to be three. Um, and uh, I own an Etsy shop called Flair and Flicker, where I uh, offer handmade and laser cut items. Um, right now, we let's see. We've been uh, we've been part of NCC for I think a little bit over three years now, mm -hmm. um, but we are currently in the process of moving back to Georgia. So right now we are in Georgia. Um, but we still have a house there. So it's, it's been a pretty long process right now. Um, but yeah, we're, st I, I think that we're probably forever be part of NCC. Yeah. Well, we miss you guys and love you so much. And we're excited for yeah, what God's doing. And so I wanted us to be able to sit down and just talk a little bit about creativity. So maybe let's take a moment and let's talk about it. <laughs> take a moment and just talk to us have you always been creative or how did you start um, with what you're doing right now um, with the shop that you have so how did you get into that has that been something you've always kind of loved doing crafts and creativity yeah I think probably since I was little I've always just enjoyed um, drawing and painting and um, I, I loved origami when I was little um, I when I when I got to be a little bit older, I, I liked making my own Barbie clothes and um, kind of choosing my, you know, choosing clothes that I don't wear anymore and then cutting them up and sewing them together, um, making some like tiny furniture. Um, and I think it, um, my dad is also a big part of, of my creativity because he's he was always the one who was drawing with us and kind of making up stories with his characters. So I always enjoyed that. Um, and then, yeah, but um, when I when I went to college, I studied architecture and I that's when I really um, got introduced to the laser cutter. Um, so we would use it to build models and I always had fun doing that because, you know, you take you take an idea like a building or um, a shed or um, like a park little um, thing that you would place in a park. So we would take whatever design that we had and then you would draw it out and I mean, first you sketch it out really. And then once you kind of have an idea of how it all comes together, you draw it out and then you um, send your vector image to the laser cutter. And then you see it kind of cutting all the lines that you drew and then you put it all together. And, and when it when it comes together like that, it's just, it was one of those those feelings where I was, it always felt like like a like a really good satisfying kind of feeling of you know you, you had something 2d and then now it's 3d and you can turn it around and really look at it from inside and out and so that's where i really fell in love with it okay that's so that's so cool when you start to like when you're going to work on a new project you're going to create something how do you get inspiration is it just something you imagine in your mind do you see other things and start to kind of build off of that or what's your process in being creative. Yeah, um, I find that when I'm actually trying to be creative is when I'm least creative. <laughs> so if I'm, yeah, if I'm trying hard to come up with something, that's usually when the not so good ideas come. So what I've learned from that is, um, you know, I, I, if I, if I ever get to the point to where I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, I want to, I want to do a new project, or I think I need to do a new project. I just kind of keep it in the back of my head and then um, just go about my day, but, but maybe add a little bit of extra, like, okay, let's, you know, let's go out today and let's, let's go to the park or um, let's do a small craft with the kids. And then um, sometimes even while cooking, <laughs> um, basically just something that, um, that will kind of get whatever I say I need to do in the back of my head. And then usually it comes when I'm walking outside and, you know, I see a leaf and I'm like, oh, that dog would be pretty cool if it was kind of drawn in this way and that way. And you kind of put a creative twist to, to the nature that I saw. Um, 
so yeah i get i get a lot of inspiration from from just everyday things i think and um yeah seeing things as i'm going about my day and then um i think the important part after that is to make note of it because that was the inspiration now we need to take it forward yeah yeah that's really good just that last part man that just hit me because i think all of us probably have random ideas you know the right head, but then capturing that and saying yeah how do i do something with that or how do i move that forward is a really really great idea and process so i love that you mentioned you know doing creative stuff with your kids so you have two girls um how do you get them involved like how do you help them be creative do you do different crafts with them um does it ever become overwhelming because this is partly your business too um do you ever need to be like i'm not going to do crafts right now so how does all of that play in with your family um so that's yeah that's that was a tricky part in the beginning because um, first and foremost, before I was just a stay at home mom. So that was my goal was to be there for, for my kids as they're growing up. And, you know, when they're young, it's really important to be there to kind of set the foundation. Right. And so that was my goal. But then um, I think at one point I started thinking if, if, um, if I'm not, I need a kind of a, um, what do you call that? A, a, not a, a release sort of like a, an artistic um, way to express myself and if I didn't get that then I was almost being selfish to them too because then I'm not being really my best self um, so um, so now we 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 kind of just do whatever um, <laughs> comes to mind sometimes I plan it sometimes I don't sometimes they're part of it sometimes they're not um I I before well see right now i can't talk about scheduling right now because it's really odd right now but um <laughs> but before i did have a pretty pretty um set schedule of when it when it's their nap time that was when i was working okay. um but right now there hasn't been a nap time <laughs> so right now my set schedule is to work when they're asleep at night okay. um and then during the day sometimes i include them in you know what do you what do you think of this or what do you think of that and I think for them as kids, it helps for them to see the process of the art piece or of the whatever creative thing that you're doing, um, no matter how long it takes, really, because, you know, um, I think now they see on YouTube, you know, all of these like arts and crafts that they could follow. But every time that you see them on YouTube, they're always fast forwarded. They're always super fast. <laughs> you know, you see it from start to finish in five minutes and you're like, let's do it. <laughs> And, and Eliza loves those videos. So, so it helps for us to be able to do something that she's found and then we take it from start to finish and she knows how, how long it actually takes, the yeah. thinking process that you have to go through and the materials that you need to find and it, it doesn't just all come out in front of you on a table, you know? Um, so yeah, so sometimes she's the one heading it out and saying, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And then we kind of tweak it to what we have or or wait until we get what we need. Um, and then sometimes I include them in in what I'm doing. So they see the, the let's say a, like a keychain with a custom um, coordinate. So they see me kind of making that on my on the computer. And then um, they they like pushing the start button and the laser cutter, and then they like to watch it. So, so I think seeing that stuff and, and um, wanting to also be part of it has been really nice. So that's, that's how we've been doing it. <laughs> no, that's really good in evolving in the process. I love that. So they kind of see, yeah, what it takes to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned you have a laser printer and other people watching this may not have this. So what are, yeah, like what are tools you started with? I don't know if you started with that or other things that are helpful as people are thinking about being creative or yeah, engaging in crafts and different things. Um, I, I got the laser, I got my laser cutter, I think maybe about three or two to three years ago, not, not very long ago. Yeah. Um, so before that, I didn't really, I just used what I had and just tried to come up with ideas and jot them down. I'd say the most important thing that you could have that you could start with is, um, a sketchbook. <laughs> sketchbook and a pen and um, you know just start jotting down ideas and just start drawing them out and you know if you catch something just 
make sure that it's on there because later on you can come back. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that you need a lot of equipment to start, especially if you're just starting, actually, it's probably more um, beneficial to not have the machines yeah. because um, I think what happens sometimes is you, you end up being driven by the machine, mm -hmm. but the, the equipment, the machine is not what defines your creativity. Yeah. You have to keep it a tool. So you still come up with your own ideas and your own um, expression um, and your own style and then use the machine to help you with that. Yeah. So it's very important not to fall into the whole, okay, this is what I have to work with. So now everything I make is going to be driven by this thing. So, um, so yeah, um, but I think at first I didn't start with laser cutting. I was... I think at one point I thought about draw, just sketching and drawing and painting, and then I went into crocheting. Um, and so, yeah, for me, the way I like to do it is I like to start with something small, not spend too much money on it, see if I actually like it. Yeah. And then later yeah. on, maybe, you know, think about, okay, well, you know, what else can I do? How can I take this further? And then that's when I um, get the, the bigger tools. Yeah, no, that's really good. This is, yeah, this has been great. Any other tips or thoughts for someone that's saying, hey, I want to be more creative or yeah, I even want to do more stuff with our, with my kids and help them with their creativity. Any last kind of thoughts or tips for them? Um, I'd say, I'd say don't think too much about being creative because I think everybody is creative in their own way. And I think that's the beauty about it. You know, everyone has a has their own way of expressing their own creativity and that's what makes it unique. Um, so don't try to be like somebody else in that sense. Um, you can always put your own twist to it um, and then don't worry too much about what you don't have because that's, you know, again, that doesn't define your craft. So, um, you know, start with a sketchbook and a pen and just start drawing it out. It's kind of like a journal, but to express your artistic side, you know, you don't really, it, it can't stay in your mind. You have to set it, you have to put it down on paper. And then once it's down on paper, then you can explore it so much more. Um, and even if you can't, even if you say you can't draw, it's not really a thing, you know, because you, you just basically do however you feel like you can express your idea. Um, I'd also say that it's a good thing to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. So for me, I have Justin for that. So we, we kind of talk through different ideas and we see how it could work or how it couldn't work. And then maybe it could tweak into this other thing and then that other thing. And then you kind of just, it's its kind of one of those conversations where there's no limit how far you can take it. Yeah, I mean, even if it starts, talk, if, even if it starts like changing into some crazy idea that you can't ever ha have or do, you can always bring it back to, okay, well, um, so yeah, so I think, I think that's, that's probably a good way to start if yeah. you're trying to be creative. Um, and then I think with the kids, um, you, you can't, um, I, I want to say kids have their own, also have their own way of expressing and you can't really be too tough on what they come up with. Um, whether it looks silly or not, um, because you can, yeah, again, you can, you can do whatever with, with the kids and it, you have to start somewhere. So if it ends up not being perfect, if it ends up being all wonky after you do it, uh, if it <laughs> ends up tasting bad, <laughs> um, it's, I think for kids, it's mostly the fun of actually doing it with you rather than the result. So, yeah, so I would just, just start with something with whatever you're interested in or whatever they're interested in and then just take it from there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much. This has been great and I hope everyone watching this, this sparks creativity or yeah, or you kind of jump out and start doing some of this. So thanks for spending time with us. Bye.